Wow, Genesis. If you've been following this channel, you may have noticed that a lot of times Genesis means electrified, fully electric in terms of motivation. But this time, this time, we're going to the top of the range in terms of their SUVs. The biggest, the most, most gnarly good of all their SUVs, the GV80. And this is not powered by an electric motor. As you can see, there's one exhaust pipe. If you want to call it that, it looks more like an exhaust UFO. And over here we see what? 3.5T, which means 3.5 turbocharged. So here is the GV80, a almost, but not quite full size. Well, you'd call it full size. I'll call it full size. SUV from Genesis, which is of course Hyundai's luxury division. And this is one beautiful car. And if you're a traditionalist, you're gonna be delighted by the fact that it has an absolutely beautiful, dare I say stellar gasoline engine to power you on your way. In addition to boatloads of room, and unlike most vehicles in this class, it's not a standard three row. We actually have a two row here with plenty of cargo area, plenty of ground clearance, plenty of power, and all wheel drive. Wanna go for a ride with this? thing. It's beautiful, it's fun, and it's all Genesis. Let's take a look, shall we? So how about 116 inches of glorious wheelbase and a very potent twin turbo V6 engine. And an interesting thing here, this particular GV80 Genesis is not a three row. You would expect this almost to be a three row SUV, but this one isn't. This is a two row. It's designed to house five human beings and lots of cargo instead of seven human beings and a little bit of cargo. And personally, I think this is a great move. And it's also an amazingly attractive vehicle. Look at that. It looks, uh, it looks like a car, but it ain't a car. And it looks like an SUV, but it ain't a total SUV. Although it does have all wheel drive and it does have a fair amount of ground clearance. Uh, but it doesn't have any crazy stuff on it like an air suspension that jacks it way up in the air or anything like that. This has just got a very sophisticated uh, type of suspension system that is designed to regulate itself as you go over bumpy terrain and adjust itself accordingly. But more than anything else, Genesis decided to take the concept of having an SUV that can actually haul a lot of stuff. It's got a lot of stuff in it, uh, a lot of room rather. Well, uh, the stuff it has in it is mostly space. So it has a lot of room there. And it also has uh, amazingly a 6,000 pound towing capacity, provided your trailer has brakes, of course. And it's a, uh, more than anything else, it has a real luxury car feel to it and along with that wonderful solidarity you get out of a big SUV. And it doesn't, despite the fact it weighs about 5,000 pounds, uh, it's not clumsy by any stretch of the imagination. It's actually a very, very well composed vehicle. And it's got plenty of power too. That's another thing about it. But being the fact that the Hyundai's worked very hard to also get some decent fuel economy out of it, Thanks to her 3.5 liter turbocharged engine, which is just a little old V6, it actually gets pretty decent mileage for something that has this kind of performance and this kind of savvy. Let's dig deeper. First of all, let's get under that engine compartment and see what we have to offer. Wowie zowie, Batman. 
check out this motor in there, which isn't a motor, it's an engine. But this is uh, 3.5 liters of twin turbo power. You got your V6 and you got, look at these beautiful, everything is so elegant with, the, with Genesis. They, they put out things in such a classy manner. Here is an air intake for the uh, driver's side cylinder bank. Here's an air, inta air intake for the passenger side cylinder bank. And so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, right in there. And they go in there and go through your turbocharging process. And then they go around the back. They th go through an intercooler. The air goes through an intercooler that's mounted up front, I believe. And I, as near as, damn it, these are your intakes for your cooled air so that you get that perfect charge of nice, cool air that's been compressed through your turbocharging process. And it puts out 375 horsepower at 5,800 RPM. And what about your torque? Well, 391 pounds of feet between 1,000 going all the way up to, I believe, 4,800 RPM, a nice wide uh, torque peak. So this, uh, they have tuned this thing to be really responsive, but they haven't tuned it in such a way that they're destroying fuel economy because it actually, I think the overall EPA rating is right around 20 miles per gallon. And for an engine that puts out this kind of power, that is quite respectable. Uh, while we're here, you may note these, these little bits of structure here. This is structure that goes from here to there. And there's one over yonder, here. The air goes to the spring tower array and all the way to the front of the vehicle. What's that for? That's a stiffener. Now, what are they stiffening? Well, hmm, who knows? It's probably the ultimate, ult overall body structure is being stiffened by those little guys. But this is one of the things you see in a vehicle that is designed for handling and designed for a sport. This is a luxury vehicle, but it's a sport luxury vehicle. And it's also an SUV. It has to do all these things. It, it has this vast resume. It has all these hats it's wearing, like a bowler and then a, a racing helmet and then all that kind of stuff. So uh, as you can see, I believe the oil, this is coolant by the way, and this particular coolant I think is feeding into the uh, uh, coolant process as far as your uh, super, uh, excuse me, your turbocharging is concerned. But I don't know, there's quite a few hose, ho <laughs> hoses, if you will, and things like that. But like I said, everything is so nicely laid out in these, uh, in these Genesis projects, the Genesis project. You look way down there, you can actually see, that's our middle spark plug right there. And you can actually see where the turbocharger is all the way down there. I have no idea if you can see that or not because I cannot see my screen to save my butt right now. But there we go. Uh, and that's the same on both sides. It's balanced. So, you got, so that's where all the turbocharging comes from. And uh, how much oil does it take? I don't know, five, six quarts, something like that. But what flavor is this oil? Well... As near as I can tell, I believe it's 10W30. I don't see it right in front of me. Uh, they recommend Shell Helix, which is also, and, and Quaker State Motor Oil. So, you know, that, get one of them, get both of them, get one of those. Maybe they own each other now, I don't know. But uh, I believe it's 1030 oil that they put in this thing. And uh, does it have a dipstick? I don't see it. Don't mean it doesn't have one, but a lot of these vehicles, and they took this lead from BMW, and a really bad lead it is, too. Uh, there, there's a, there is, that looks like a transmission dipstick back there. So if it has a transmission dipstick, surely, surely we must have a, <laughs> an oil one. I don't see anything here. Here's a little, here's a little symbol right here. Uh, I guess you lift this up. That's where you put your oil in. But anyway, I'll, I'll check on that for you because uh, I don't see anything obvious. But if I read, I, I read over the uh, specifications very quickly and I believe it's 1030 that it knows. But anyway, there's your 375 horses to take you on your way. And oh yes, there's a transmission. Since this isn't electric and it just doesn't spin faster to get you to go faster, you have eight forward speeds. And you also have, of course, an all-wheel drive system. And I believe there is a differential lock between the front and the rear drivetrain. Rear drivetrain being, of course, just an extension of the front via a drive shaft. But uh, I would imagine most of the time, this, this, the Genesis vehicles 
are primarily rear wheel drive based for performance, kind of like BMW does that. And there's all kinds of debates about that and have been since there's been front wheel drive cars. But for most of us, rear wheel drive is much easier to deal with, especially in terms of oversteer. And uh, as a friend of mine back in college used to say about rear wheel drive, it's rear wheel drive, dude. You grew up with it. You know how to drive it. And that's pretty much true. So when you're in your standard mode of driving, you're probably being driven by your rear wheels, but the front ones come in when necessary. And that means not necessarily in slippery conditions, but in uh, any condition where traction could be benefited by having all four wheels at play. Understand all that? Of course you do. Let's look at the braking system, shall we? Wow. Michelin Primacy Tour AS tires on 20 inch wheels. My gosh. Classy, no? But regard, if you will, the size of both the brake caliper here, which is huge, a huge billet thing, and <laughs> billet aluminum, I think. No, that may be, no, that's probably cast iron. I don't know. I didn't make it. Uh, and here we have our massive disc. So uh, suffice it to say, this portends of excellent braking, and which is good with a 5,000 uh, pound vehicle that can probably go about 5,000 miles an hour with that big old uh, V-twin. Is it a V-twin? No, wait. It's a V. Yes, it's a, it's a six-cylinder V-twin with two turbochargers. We were just there. Gosh, it must be the heat. Uh, and as we migrate our way down our 116-inch wheelbase, we and come to the back. This beautiful uh, fastback line, I, I, I really like the lines on this car a lot because uh, a friend of mine said, it looks like a hearse. Well, uh, yeah, but he'd had a bit to drink, I think. But uh, it looks something to me like a, a Genesis GV80 because it's kind of unique looking. There's a similarity in lines of some other vehicles out there, but like a Mercedes, here's a Mercedes that looks a little like this. There's a Lexus that looks a little bit like this, but not quite completely like this. It's one of the things I love about these, uh, these Genesis cars. Let's see, if I do that with my leg, nothing happens, so that must not be turned on. So I press this button here, and there we go. Now examine, if you will, there's no third row seat, like I said before. Instead, there's room, generous room, lots of room. Very nicely finished, as you can see. And this little cubby right here, this is your owner's manual, which is, uh, uh, the Genesis owner's manual is a beautiful thing to behold because it's extremely comprehensive. It has everything in it. Uh, all kinds of great things for the owner to know, like how to take care of the car. Now underneath here, right in here, here is our, uh, this is our, protective device that we put up to keep prying eyes from seeing the cargo area. It, at the moment, it is not deployed. Now, what do we have further up here? <gasps> That's probably tire repair materials. And below all this, I'm sure, I believe there is a spare tire. I will check for you. Let's go. Here we go. No, I see a muffler. I don't actually see a tire. There may be one though, and just because I don't see it, does, I, I, this strikes me as the kind of vehicle that would absolutely have at least a temporary spare tire. Uh, but as you can see, all this space can be expanded through the use of magic. I like that, power operated seat folding. If you come up with a bundle of stuff, you got that great big uh, grandfather clock and you realize, oh hell, I can't get it in with the seats up. That's all you got to do, press the button. Want them to come back to you? There we go. They do that on both sides in roughly your 60-40 increments or looks like 60-35 is what I'm looking at, I think. Uh, something like that. Wait a minute, should I sigh for this? Uh, I can't. I got my shoes on. I can't figure that out. But I'm still wondering what happens if I do. Oh, what's this? Oh, this is good. I have no idea. What's this here? Ah, that's a cargo net. If you need to, uh, if, you, if you got like a small Velociraptor that you need to tie down, there you go, right there. So I think there's a spare. 
<laughs> I'm looking everywhere for it. Ah, uh, I'm thinking they're going to uh, tire mobility kit. Oh dear, dear, and yet I thought it was perfection. So this one does not have a spare tire; it has a tire mobility kit instead. That's fine. That's fine. That's where. That's that's the way you want to go. There you go. But the, as you can see, the opening is nice and huge. The lift over is sort of high, but not too bad. But it's the space. I'm telling you, it's the space. Further actuated, actuated. Uh, what's that word? Oh, enhanced by your panoramic roof, which runs all the way through the car practically. We can sort of peek up in there and see it. Yeah, there it is. But anyway, there we go. There's some of the hard parts of this beautiful, beautiful car. And now we move into the funkiest part of all, which is the control interface system, also known as the inside dashboard driver's area. Let's see, passenger talk. The front microphone will pick up the driver's voice and play it through the rear speakers. Ooh, I think that may be aimed at children or naughty CEOs, I don't know which. Ah, well, welcome. <clears throat> welcome to the GV80 interior. And look at them flashing red lights. You guys know what that is, right? We've been over this before with some other Genesis models. And actually, quite a few cars have this now. Now, there's two things it could be. One is it's a camera watching me to see if I'm dozing. And the other and more likely situation in this particular situation is part of the 3D effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my menu here and I'm going to go to, uh, let's see, where should we go? Setup and device connections vehicle that's 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 what we have here vehicle and driver assistance drive mode heads up display cluster 3d depth design okay now if i remove the 3d let's see what happens ah there go those lights <clears throat> so that is definitely what this is for and if we go to the 3d effect of medium boom they are back and I put it back on where I like it, which is maximum. And there we are. Now, I don't know. Uh, I have to look at this very carefully. But I want you to imagine that your flat screen TV or your laptop or your telephone, whatever the heck you're looking at here, is, a, is in fact a 3D vessel. And you can get uh, an amazing... I don't know how they do this, but this is where we're getting... And <clears throat> no, I don't think it has anything to do with artificial intelligence, <laughs> but it is an amazingly advanced display system that makes this flat screen look like you have three-dimensional instruments, uh, which is great. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off here so you don't have to, you will not be uh, there. Get rid of those red lights. Uh, and now it looks kind of flat, <laughs> but remarkable stuff. Anyway, the thing I love about the... Uh, most of the Genesis line is like this, too. They, they put out some very, very good and logical instrumentation. As you can see, you have a nice big speedometer on the left, a nice big tachometer on the right, and the standard mandatory for all sane people, a fuel gauge and a temperature gauge. Those are two of the most important. Now, if we drop down here, right down in there, we have our miles per gallon on the, mo on the mo moment, and then the average on the right, which is 19.3 which is not bad for this vehicle because that 3.5 liter, 375 horsepower twin turbo V6 is a very strong engine and it's got plenty of oomph and it's hard not to drive in, let us say, a spirited manner because it's uh, the pickup on it's great and the transmission, the 8-speed transmission works really well with it. So, but what else do we have here to pick from? Well, let's see, we got, uh, that's my radio, a feature unavailable. What, what, oh, passenger talk is, is actually active. I left it on, which reminds me of something else I need to do. I need to, uh, let's see, climb a door, lift gates. I'm going to come over here a minute, and I'm going to go to, we'll go on over and navigate sound, sound, premium sound, active sound, active sound design. I wonder if we have you know what, you know what I like. You know what I love? Passenger talk is not... How do I turn that off? Oh, man. Now now I've gotten into 
<laughs> now I have managed to put myself into a conundrum situation. Where were we, guys? Uh, voice memo, club, passenger talk, talking. Okay, hang on. End. Off. How do I turn this off? Are you off? Uh, okay. All right. Now, hopefully, let's go back over to sound. Wait a minute. What's quiet mode? We have all these modes. What is quiet mode? When quiet mode is selected, radio media is played only in the front seats. Well, they're really thinking about that limousine type situation in the back. That's interesting to me. Um, because as you're going to see when we get back there, there is so much room back there. All right. Where's the sound again? I was there. I was there. Maybe it's in media. Let, let's try media. Let's try media. Sounds of nature! That's, you knew, you knew that's what I wanted. City of Dawn, experience of the universe. Right, wait a minute, where's Lively Force? There it is. All right. Can you hear the crickets? I can. Welcome, friends, to the interior of the Genesis GV83.5T. Prestige. <laughs> I love that. I love it. Look, I'm telling you, Hyundai slash Genesis, I do love the sounds of nature. It's one of my favorite features on your cars. I, I, I'm, I'm not kidding either. I love it. I think it's great. Uh, anyway, we were... Uh, before all that happened, what, how did that happen? Oh, here we go. Uh, in here, we have we can pick from a variety of our central displays in our cluster. That's, of course, uh, what are we doing with our uh, cruise control. Then we have our compass. Then we have our trip. Since refueling, I've gone 113 miles and, yeah, 19.2 miles per gallon. Not bad. Not bad at all. So that's pretty interesting. we have anything else we can do with this? Oh yeah, here we go. Here's accumulated information. Driver attention warning is off. I did that. Uh, tire pressure. Select con. You can actually have selected contents put in there. I'm not sure exactly how to do that, but that's nice. But overall, uh, what an excellent display. Now, there is one thing I should, while I'm here, let us go back to uh, setup. And let us go back to vehicle Oops. and let us and let's let the little birdies chirp away heads up display uh, you want to see the heads up display all right enable heads up display there can you see it yeah there it is it's uh, checking things and there uh, this is why I just don't like those but that's me uh, let's see now down the cluster and let's look at our various uh, theme selections here. Uh, theme A, which is what we've been on right there. And then we have theme B. And that's what happens if you have it linked to the various drive modes. Uh, this is what you'll get when you're in the sport mode. You'll get the reddish orange. And go down to theme C. And I believe this is what you get if you uh, have it in the eco mode. And what are our drive modes? Well, Snow, Eco, Comfort, Sport, and Custom. Custom being the, one of the best because you can uh, pick and choose various uh, commodities that will ultimately tell you exactly what you want. In turn, well, don't tell you, excuse me, exactly give you what you want in terms of various performance parameters like uh, the steering and the acceleration and things like that. Well, we'll cover that in a minute. All right, so uh, now that we've basically covered that, we, and we've basically covered this, you may have noticed this is a very widescreen dude. And see, it, it goes, uh, you have all these different areas. You got your quiet modes and your passenger talk, and all these other things that I don't understand half of voice memo. Voice memo is nice, actually, I guess. And then the seat adjustment, which is uh, replete with all kinds of uh, things. So, that's our screen and our navigation screen is 
Right now, I believe we're in uh, night mode for some reason. It's kind of dark, but uh, as you can see, we're nowhere. I can, uh, you can use this dial here to get closer or further away. And as you can tell, as you go further away, there we got more stuff on this. It's very dark though. I'm not sure why that is exactly. Uh, but that's just, that is the way of things. But, it, uh, trust me when I tell you, it's a very good uh, navigation system. And it, uh, as far as your interface goes, when you're putting in addresses and things like that, it's just like any other machine these days. It's uh, right on, it's on par with everybody else. It's easy to use and it seems to be fairly accurate. And it is, uh, being this is a premium uh, label, on this vehicle, uh, you get frequent updates and that kind of thing on your traffic situation and everything else. So that's good. Now we drop down here to our climate control situation, and like everybody else, it has an unusually large display to tell you exactly what's going on. Like you can see, we have some upper air and some, we're getting blasted with middle air on the automatic mode, as is the passenger. Oh, and if we go here, there's rear. That's what's going on back there, back there when there's a you know during during the talks that are going on back there, the the passenger mode thing. You know, you, you know what I'm talking about. There we go. <clears throat> and then of course you just uh, select your uh, temperature for your particular zone, either the passenger or the driver, and uh, or you can sync them together like that, and you adjust them like this. Very simple. I, I usually, you know, when, when automakers first started with the automatic modes on air conditioning, or I should say HVAC, the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, it, it seemed to be very inaccurate. It, it, it was either blowing you too much cold air or, or, or not enough. And, but over time, they've just, like everything else, they've really refined it and it's gotten so much better than it used to be. It's quite good now. Uh, and well, below there, we have our seat ventilation, we have our seat heating, and we have our uh, steering heating. And as you will see on the, during our, one of our driving portions, if that particular part of the driving portion makes it through the editing process, uh, I actually I was putting my phone down here, which is your near, near field communication QI situation, where you can uh, charge your cell phone down there. And I bumped it, and all of a sudden the steering wheel, I just did it again! And, I, and the steering wheel started to get kind of hot. So uh, that's that. It, it, you don't need that during the summer. Yeah, but the winter, that's a uh, heated steering wheel is a beautiful thing. So down there, as I mentioned, we have our uh, cell phone charging region. We also have uh, two USB-A type uh, plugs down there. I don't see a USB-C, but I'm sure there's one somewhere on this car. Now we get into the controversial area. I've had this problem with, uh, oh, this is my smoothie, by the way. It's, it's a real good smoothie. I it's got your uh, strawberries and your orange juice and some, a little bit of milk. And anyway, and bananas. Bananas are very important. Uh, we have two dials here. We have two that are very similar in diameter not completely similar and this one's knurled on the outside and this one is kind of scalloped <laughs> but here's the thing this is of course your transmission selector where we go to, there's reverse excuse me yeah there's reverse and neutral and drive and park uh, as far as your manual mode goes I think you just start using the uh, the paddle shifters to go into manual mode because I don't see any specific M setting here. Uh, but here's the thing. So that is your transmission. This is your 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 touch screen up there. When I when I turn this, let me go to something more obvious. When I when I turn this back and forth, you see it's moving up and back and forth there. Now, these two things, these two dials are very similar in diameter and they're very similar in feel. Now, I'm sure after you've owned this car for a year, you're probably gonna be fine, and you will not make mistakes or anything like that, but if you're just starting to drive the car, they are way too similar to each other. Uh, and you can, I, I don't know how many times I've, I've been ready to shift it into reverse and grab this thing by mistake and done this and nothing happens. It does not go into reverse. 
And so I'm not sure why they did it this way. I think they need to rethink that personally. Now we have a small little dial right over here and this is our drive mode selection. Here's our camera button and we push our camera button and look at that. We have all manifestation of cameras. You got your 360 on the right and that you got your rear. Uh, and I, I can't say enough about the new camera systems because they're so incredibly useful, especially when parking. You can't beat them. Uh, very, very, and it's also, I'll tell you something else. Uh, if you have an area where you have small children or uh, dogs or small dogs that are like children, uh, it's real good to have those cameras so you can keep an eye on them and make sure they stay safe when you're maneuvering the car around in the proximity of your homestead. Uh, what else do we have here? Well, we have our parking uh, assist right here, and this is really nice for this vehicle. This is a center differential lock. So uh, if you're in a situation, let's say you're in the snow setting and you're in deep snow, and you're sliding around quite a bit, you can lock the uh, center differential, which will keep both the front and rear axles running. So you'll have true four wheel drive. Uh, and that's nice. That's very nice. And that on top of a very sophisticated traction control system. And uh, Bob's your uncle. So this is a vehicle that does have some all weather and uh, a little bit of light trail capability. I mean, it does have fairly good clearance. But it's not a hardcore off-roader, but it does have, definitely has, uh, in terms of weather, snow, rain, sleet, hail, <laughs> all that kind of thing, it's, it's in great shape for uh, keeping you on the straight and level. Here we have a very deep storage area with all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, this stuff here, I want to show you this. This is good stuff right here. This is primarily eucalyptus, and it uh, mosquitoes don't like it. It's, and it's kind of oily, but man, it does the job. And we've uh, had deer flies and mosquitoes pretty bad here this summer, so I, that stuff goes with me everywhere. I love it. Um, what else can I tell you? Well, the seats, which are ventilated. I'm going to ventilate mine right now. Uh, the front seats that are ventilated. This is beautiful, optional Napa leather, which is part of the... Uh, Prestige 20. I, I said Prestige earlier. It's actually Prestige 20. Why 20? I don't know. 19 just wasn't sufficient, I guess. But these seats are extremely comfortable, and this Napa leather uh, is fantastic. And then you have the perforations here that facilitate in your ventilation, and really, really comfortable car. And as you can probably tell, the workmanship in this GV80 is excellent. It's a really nicely put together car. We got the really, like the microfiber or some damn headliner stuff here that's really nice. But it does oud quality, ooze quality. Did I say oud? Is there a word called oud? I know not of this oud. But uh, this is an excellent, uh, an excellent car overall. But uh, the neatest part about it that I'm going to share with you now is the rear seat because this being a two row instead of a three row I think they may have located the uh, rear seats a little further aft so you have an amazing amount of room so let's go back there now you know before I take you aft I do need to show you this because this is interesting these buttons on the passenger seat right here look we can move ourselves up and back like so and there's this right here where you can fold this forward how far will it go that far so you have that ease of adjustability if you need it right there in the side and i'm seeing more and more cars do this especially the luxury makes and it's a nice feature to have oh and by the way I'm, I'm getting more and more interested in the quality of our glove box size and uh as you can see, that's the basically the New York City phone book, if there was one still. There probably is, I would think. Uh, but that's your uh, owner's manual. There's a lot to keep up with on this car. Okay, uh, okay. Now we're gonna we're gonna go back and let me make sure it's unlocked. And let me make sure that's unlocked. Okay, good. All right. Let's see here now. 
Look at the size of this roof line thingy back here. All right, opening this very large door. That's a big door. That's almost Secret Service size. Uh, and the door opening itself is nice and wide. Opens nearly 90 degrees, not quite. But here we go. Oh, yeah. Ah, room. Now let's check this. Uh, we got some neat things here. The window itself goes down almost, uh, I'd say about 92%. Now what happens if I do this? Woo! How cool is that? It's not only a window shade, but it, in my opinion, an unusually cool window shade. It's very quiet. Everything on this car does have this feeling of solidarity. Yes, it is an expensive vehicle, but man, it sure feels like it. I mean, you could pay you could pay more for this for a pickup truck uh, than this car, and I guarantee you the interior quality and the feel of the build assembly quality of it is not even in the same ballpark as this. This is right up there with Mercedes and BMW and Lexus. I mean, it, there, there's when you get in one of these luxury cars, if they did everything right you have a feeling of solidarity and quality and almost like a handmade feel to it that you just don't get on uh, on the, the non-luxury brands. And that's why they're so expensive because that's a lot, the, the materials are more expensive. The car itself, as far as assembly, testing and everything else to do, because a lot of these things, a lot of these luxury makes, they test every single vehicle that comes off the assembly line on a little test track. I know Lexus does that, uh, but I'm sure everybody else does too. And I'm pretty sure BMW down in South Carolina does that because they make a lot of their uh, SUVs for the North American market are built down there and they do have a little track there. So anyway, God, where do we start with all the wonderfulness? Well, we'll come down here and look here. We can completely adjust our rear seat temperature preferences and the room is excellent. You also can recline and move back, move back and forth a bit, much like you can in the front. It's almost like being the second set of drivers back here with these things. And no, not captain's chairs anyway, which is kind of nice. This is a true bench seat, but it's a very comfortable bench seat. And with excellent lower back support, it's impressive. But you also have, guess what, heated, uh-huh. And you ventilated right down here. That's pretty great. I mean, everything about, the, I, ever, I have to be honest with you, I've had this car for five days. I've been driving it quite a bit. I really like this thing. I, don't, I know I don't say that all the time about cars, even cars that I do like a lot. But man, this is a, this is a really, really good machine. Now, one thing I am curious about is can I close this from back here. Uh, well, first, excellent map light, by the way. And look at what, what's this? What's this here? <gasps> Vanity. See, there you are. You thought you were a person and you're just a GoPro in a steel housing. Jesus. I, and I know that's got to be a frightening thing for you, but that's okay. But look, you got your light up there. You can be ready to go to the show, to the theater. I mean, that's cool. Uh, what else do we got? Now, I don't see, doesn't mean it's not here, but I don't see the shade adjustment. I guess you have to ask your chauffeur to deal with that for you. But we do, I do see this very nice armrest, and this armrest has, what's this here? What's this here? It is nothing. It's at a very, it's at a very, uh, a very good height, I would say. You got your drinks, which, as you can see, I left my smoothie up front, and that's so far away on this massive vehicle. I, that's a couple of days hike over all this terrain right here to get to it. Can't do that. Oh, that's what that does. Look at this. Holy cow, there's a lot of room in there. Wow, that's nice. So you got your own console. It's kind of mim mimicking the things that you have if you're in the front seat. <laughs> you have all of them back here, too. The only thing I can't find, and that's just me, is the, uh, what happens if I, oops, let's try this. If I do that and then do this and then do it again. 
and nothing happens. Okay, fair enough. I think you just have to yell, or you can re you can probably reach up here and say, yeah, I want you to do that. Oh, and they both close at the same time. I guess it's an all or nothing thing. But I do like the op opposing directions. It's kind of a yin and yang thing. Let's open them up. Up, excuse me. Oh, opposite direction than I would have thought. It's quick, too. Ah, the sounds of nature. Oh, I did the whole thing. I even opened up the front. Wow. That was a one-touch operation. Nice, though. Oh, the mosquitoes are getting in. Let's see now. Uh, there we go. Nope, that's good. There we go. That's where we want to be. All right. So what else do I have to tell you about the back seat? Well, I'm about to take a nap. That's how nice it is. Um, it seems like it's got a, a tremendous amount of uh, room in all directions. Headroom, legroom, couple distance, everything. Uh, overall, and again, with our Napa leather, uh, and our, oh, I've never, you know, this is a rare experience to get a ventilated seat in the back. You have to go to the serious upscale. But this is, after all, the Prestige 20. So I guess that's, uh, that's kind of what you expect that. Oh, there we go. I can feel the coolness of it all. Oh, nice. So anyway, uh, once again, if you go back and see the, uh, the G90, I think I did a long time ago. Uh, with all the, uh, it had the mood curator. I, I don't think this has the mood curator. I would have seen it, right? I hope so. Yeah, I would have. Uh, <laughs> this is just an amazingly comfortable car, and it has a great drivetrain. And <clears throat> if, you, if you'll go back in some of my videos, you can find the G70, which is uh, the G70 electric, electrified version, which is fully electric, also all-wheel drive, and an electric, uh, an electric, all-electric alternative to this vehicle. But uh, as it stands right now, this is a very, very nicely put together machine with an excellent drivetrain. And uh, let's go out on the road now, shall we? And uh, enjoy it. And by the way, if you, if you do have uh, additional people, let's say, I think you can get this in a, well, in fact, I know you can, get it in with a, a three row, seven passenger configuration. But you know what? I think if I were you, unless you have the youngins that you got to put back there, I'd go with the uh, five-seater because it, you have all that generous cargo room and you have this tremendously huge back seat, and uh, it's all good. And now, I think I'll go down to the water hole and gig me a frog. Later. I just don't know with these uh, Genesis cars, 
This 3D here is, uh, I, I, I'm pretty sure you can't really see it. And incidentally, if you're seeing some red lights from time to time coming from here, that's actually doing something with the 3D that I don't even understand. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's fascinating to look at because it is a flat screen. It's scary, really, uh, where we're going with our technologies. We have so many, and they're all so powerful. Everyone's got you worried about artificial intelligence. Well, there is no such thing. There are no computers that think. Don't worry about that. That's not where we're at. What they do have is unusually good uh, algorithms and a whole another level of algorithms. You see them in the, with each subsequent new car year when they come out with their latest stuff. You see more and more sophisticated algorithms doing all kinds of things. However, um, a lot of the basics are the same as far as the way adaptive cruise control works. It's pretty much the same. I haven't seen any dramatic improvements in that. And it's, it's always varied from manufacturer to manufacturer. Hyundai and Genesis, uh, I've always considered them sort of bid pack in terms of the uh, accuracy of the adaptive cruise and as far as what it tells you to do and doesn't tell you to do. Uh, which, what I'm talking about there is I'm talking about when I say it tells me what to do, it's actually telling the car what to do and just kind of letting you know yeah, we're going to go this lane. We're, we're going to go on this one. If you go into one of these situations where you have like three lanes going into two lanes, oh boy, that's a fun one. Because then this is what people would uh, describe as an artificial intelligence situation. It has to decide. It has, it's not thinking. It's using all the data that it has and it's acting accordingly based on that data. You could argue this is all we as human beings do. We react to uh, various stimuli, various input of various different things, and we do. But it's uh, on a level that is so much more complicated and sophisticated than any computers yet developed. And this is why I still say a, a well-trained, alert, focused driver will outperform any kind of autonomous automobile every time because we see things that they can't see. We can anticipate things better than they can. They're trying to put all this in the... And will they get there eventually? Well, they'll get there real close. But you have to remember that uh, the bulk of most aircraft, the, look at how safe airliners are right now and have been for years. And it's largely because of the training and the focus of the uh, pilots. That, the sophisticated autonomous systems are great and they're great tools, no question about it. But, you know, in a really nasty crosswind situation, it's still a pilot, a human being that's landing the airplane. So, uh, anyway, I, I, I mention all these things because uh, this is such a, a, all Genesis models are such a tour de force in terms of the latest technologies. And this is really fun. Uh, as I had the, uh, I had almost the electric version of this uh, earlier this year. It was the G70, GV70, which is uh, it's a little smaller. It doesn't have the huge rear cargo area that this does, but it's a very similar vehicle in most respects. And uh, so comparing this, uh, this is a, an absolutely terrific uh turbocharged engine 3.5 T it's Daisy a T is for tango which we all dun, 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 like to do uh, tango but it, it really is take we've come a long way since uh, manufacturers started taking a turbo charge uh, v6 and turbocharging it Ford's been doing it for a long time now with their eco boosts and uh, you know, there's everybody else, almost most manufacturers somewhere in their lineup, there are exceptions, uh, but have a V6 that is twin, has twin turbochargers on it. And when you do that, there's a lot of different complexities involved to do it right. And uh, Genesis and Hyundai have been doing this for a while now. 
and they've put so much time and effort into it that what you're getting is a, an engine that just basically feels much larger than it is, which I think is ultimately the goal. I mean, everybody likes a good V8 engine. Uh, and everybody misses the fact that they're, you know, they're disappearing, but they're disappearing for two reasons, emissions and fuel economy. And the, the V6 turbos are doing, um, are much improved in terms of fuel economy when you're in extremely low uh, efficiency situations, i.e. things like slow moving stop and go traffic. Um, one of the reasons I think that Ford has had, I guess, from what I can tell, fairly good luck with putting uh, turbocharged V6s in police vehicles is they're either doing one or two things. They're either sitting there idling, which burns gas, or they're going like flat out. <laughs> there's, there's not a whole lot of middle road. There's middle road. Sometimes they're just out patrolling and stuff, but those are, those are the two most common situations that they find themselves in. They're either sitting on the side of the road idling or and running the lights and all that other stuff or they're pursuing the perps i have to get away from all this uh, hay everywhere but as you can see it's it's extremely smooth and extremely powerful a lot of horsepower 375 horsepower and when you combine that with a really really quiet cabin this is amazingly quiet a matter of fact, this vehicle is, is, has, has already had, the, the GV80 has not been around all that long. I want to say five years, maybe. But it's had an interesting life, and I believe golf uh, superstar Tiger Woods was in a really bad wreck. Incidentally, uh, going to a, his own uh, golf tournament, I believe it's named after him, the, his, one of his lead sponsors was Hyundai. But he, uh, he had an accident in this car, a single vehicle accident. And I believe he was driving one of these. I believe he was driving a, a GV80. And uh, it's going way too fast. Never, of course, being Tiger Woods, he never got busted for reckless driving or anything. And the police said, oh, it's because we didn't have any witnesses. But crossed over, over into the wrong side of traffic, over into a ditch, over in, into a wooded semi-wooded ditched area and rolled I think at least once uh, but it was a bad accident uh, the kind where they needed like practically cut him out of the uh, out of the accident and he was he was very badly hurt there's no question about it and to this day he uh, he can't he has uh, leg issues but he's he's had issues with knees and legs and hips and stuff just from uh, other injuries he's had playing golf all his life but anyhow that vehicle did an amazing job of keeping him alive i mean that it was a bad enough accident that he very he could have been really crippled for life or he could have been killed and uh the vehicle did a very very good job at keeping uh at, at its crash absorption and that's one of those situations where you have the initial crash where the airbags deploy and then that's it and, it, and the crash continues so that you have to have uh, something other than airbags because the airbags are done at that point. They can't help you anymore. So you have to have a good structure, body structure, uh, in order to, to, to keep the occupant safe. And uh, one of the advantages to some of these uh, more upscale vehicles is they put so much effort into a solid quiet ride which means a lot of heavy duty engineering and a lot of mass to be honest with you uh, that it also helps to protect you in a collision the, the roll cage aspect of the car is very very good and uh, they can they can do amazing things to help protect you well and this one clearly did i mean like i said he was hurt very very bad but he did survive and He's still able to play golf, although he hasn't been playing at the level that he used to. And I, I think that's largely because his, uh, physically he can't, he can't do what he used to be able to do. But anyhow, uh, that really got, as uh, strange as it may seem, that actually got a lot of attention for the Genesis brand because people, it was, you know, such a huge story at the time. And they saw 
how wadded up the car was and the fact that Tiger survived. So, uh, this is uh, a real, and it, it, another thing that's fascinating about the GVs in general is it's one, it's taking that kind of thing. I almost like to go all the way back to the, the, when, when uh, Nissan introdu introduced the Murano, because that was kind of a strange car initially. People try, what is it? What, what is it? Is it an SUV? It looks more like a big sedan, uh, but it definitely has a big, or is it a station wagon? What? <laughs> and that, that's kind of, I still feel that was one of the vehicles that created this whole class of vehicle. Uh, and every, every manufacturer is kind of toyed around with it, done, done some things with it. But uh, Genesis in particular, I think, has really taken this to the next level in that uh, I, Mercedes too, to a small extent. Uh, they, they have d decided that they could make a premium luxury vehicle that has sporting performance but still has a lot of practical us usable space. And then when you throw in all-wheel drive, of course, you have off to the ski lodge situation on your hands, which is great. And you can do some light off-road work if that is uh, uh, in your uh, in your lifestyle situation. You usually don't think about taking your luxury car up to a campsite somewhere off a, off a fire road or something, but you can with vehicles like this. And uh, this one in particular has got a fair amount of ground clearance and it does um, it does a pretty good job suspension wise also because the suspension is really it has a system in it to adjust the shock absorbers I believe uh, actively and depending on what the sensors are telling what's going on with the suspension it can stiffen it up when it needs to very very quickly instantaneously so you have a really good ride quality but you also have good handling because it's firm enough that it keeps this big heavy vehicle, this 5,000 pounder, uh, under control quite nicely. I still think it's impressive that they, uh, Genesis says you can tow a 6,000 pound trailer with it. That's, uh, that's a, that's a, most of them in this class are usually 3,500 to 5,000. Uh, 6,000 is great. That's a lot. That's, uh, that's, that's a fair amount. You can tie, that's a big trailer. Would I want to do it with this? Well, I don't know. But the thing is, they say you can. They say it can handle it. And who are we to argue with the powers that be? And the thing is, when you have something like that, you can uh, absolutely, I'm gonna try some cruise control here. There we go. Uh, you're, you're under warning when you do that. If you're towing, if you have a problem some people didn't, don't even realize that. I always look at the of the uh, towing rating for any vehicle as that's what it's warranted to tow. In other words, if you have an engine or drivetrain problem that it just it's overstressed, but you're towing a trailer that falls within that uh, what they say you can tow, uh, you still have warranty. You still have a drivetrain warranty, and it, it's like one of those weird things. Like there was always a question about. Uh, snow plows when you put a snow plow on a pickup for the longest time. I don't know what the situation is right now to be honest with you. But if you did put a plow on your new truck, you voided you voided the engine and uh, drivetrain warranty because <laughs> it wasn't ready to do it. It wasn't ready to do that, so they stayed. Nice smooth eight-speed transmission too. It's almost, uh, it's it's. There's a certain level you get to when you get to luxury brands that you just, you get to a point of expectation. You expect the uh, transmit the engine to be smooth and strong and have a nice linear power de delivery. You also expect the transmission to shift really smoothly, like uh, effortlessly. You can't even tell for sure what gear you're in. And uh, as it turns out, this one nails those things. You also expect it to be quiet, have a great ride, an unusually good ride compared with a non-luxury make. 
and this does it, 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 it hits all it checks all them boxes does a really really nice job with all of that uh, I'm I've only been how many miles have I put on here I haven't really put 70 miles on here have I where the heck did I go oh yeah I know where I went oh yeah I, I know where I went I remember uh, <laughs> uh, I've, I've driven at 71 miles now and um, I really enjoy driving this thing and it doesn't feel like an SUV and it does not feel even though you got acres of uh, headroom and this being a, a five seat instead of a seven uh, excuse me a five passenger instead of a seven passenger not having that third row I can't help but wonder if they move the second row back slightly because there is some serious room in that second row it is uh, tremendously nice and I highly recommend it <laughs> It's pretty great. But you can't drive from back there unless you're unusually tall or have some of them, uh, one of them superheroes, uh, what was he? They, I remember Plastic Man. That may have been uh, Mad Magazine, though. But he had them great big long arms he could stretch out there. Sophistication of sophistication. Here on our uh, GV80 rear suspension, we have your standard fare in terms of we have a unibody construction to the chassis itself, and then we have a subframe that is really uh, extremely interesting in that it's got it's got to house both the uh, rear differential for the rear drive system, which is right there. And then you have uh, a, a kind of an unusual suspension. If you look here, the uh, lower control arm is this beautiful aluminum. And then we have this uh, pan hard rod. It almost looks like a, uh, like it might have rear wheel steering, and, but this one does not. Well, it has to have rear wheel steering because it's got a ball joint right there. But where is the actuator for the rear wheel? Well. I don't see it, and it doesn't say anything in the specs about it having rear wheel steering. Uh, Genesis loves rear wheel steering. They put it on a lot of cars, but I don't actually see. It looks like it has everything it needs for rear wheel steering, except it doesn't have it, <laughs> if that makes any sense, because it looks like it could pivot on this uh, right there where you see that ball joint right underneath there with a the little rubber boot on it. But that is not rear wheel steering. That is part of the linkage, rear uh, linkage. And something else that's real interesting, if you uh, take a look at this lower control arm and then look at the distance forward, how wide this lower control arm actually is. And the coil spring is mounted way over here, right down there. So you have a real spread out, for lack of a better term, uh, rear suspension system with a standard coil spring and uh, upper and lower A-arms. So it's a double wishbone type of affair. It's really slick is what it is. It's not your basic, uh, and no, it doesn't have rear wheel steering now that I look at it. It could though. If you replaced in here somewhere and put in an actuator, I think you could have rear wheel steering, but it doesn't. Uh, that's that's fascinating. This whole rear end situation is fascinating. Something else that is something is uh, uh, the drive shaft located right there with that little white piece of tape on it right there. Uh, it looks unusually stout. I see a lot of rear wheel drive cars or cars that are all wheel drive and they usually don't have a uh, rear drive shaft array since there's two of them, one on each side that goes into your differential that is that stout. I mean, that's a real piece of work right there. Uh, and as you can also tell, there's quite a bit of ground clearance and a fair amount of protection, especially in the front underbody. So uh, yeah, you could take this thing off road a bit and it does have uh, a pretty sophisticated all wheel drive system, but it doesn't have an off road setting for the drivetrain. It does have a snow setting. So I guess you could make do with that. But um, 
again, look at the size of that lower wishbone and then the upper wishbone is very similar to that and that massive coil spring right there. The bottom line here is I've been going on and on about what a good ride this thing has. And now you can see why. Uh, it's got a very, very well-developed suspension. And uh, all in all, it's, it's kind of unique as far as what I've been looking at in terms of the broad spectrum of, uh, let's just say, unibody-based all-wheel drive machines. Uh, this one seems like it could actually take quite a bit of punishment. But at the same time, it's also got so much aluminum in it to make it a very good performing, uh, almost like a sporting platform. So there you go, a, a, a very Genesis-like thing, this, uh, this rear suspension. And uh, it kind of matches perfectly the design philosophy behind the whole car. Quality all the way. I know, I know what you're wanting to know more than any other thing about this car is what color is it? Well, it's Adriatic Blue is the official paint color. And it costs next uh, $575. <laughs> and with our advanced package and our prestige 20 inch package, our uh, 2023 GV80 all wheel drive 3.5T prestige comes to $75,800. Now that's a lot of money, but it's a whole lot of car. And I really, really enjoy driving this one, folks. And it's got so much cargo room in it that. Uh, well, you can bring all your stuff and, and head to the hills, or if you want to, head to the ocean. Maybe do some diving, some surfing, some sailing. And I got some music for you, too. Take care, Jimmy. Bye, folks. Ja,